Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine, and today we are going to begin talking about scientific measurements and calculations. So this is chapter two, and we usually begin by discussing the scientific method. I like to show Sherlock Holmes. If you don't know who he is, look him up, Google him. Um, and the scientific method is a logical approach to solving problems by observing and collecting data formulating hypotheses, testing those, and formulating theories that would be supported by data. And there are four steps, so let's look at that. A way to remember the four steps is O heck, where O is observation, you use your senses, H is the hypothesis, the so-called educated guess, E are your experiments, and C would be the conclusion, and that's your explanation, and often it results in a theory. So here is the Ms. Augustine example. I walk into my living room one night and flip on the light switch. Nothing happens. My observation. The light didn't turn on when I turned the switch. Hypothesis, my educated guess. The light bulb must have burned out. Experiment. I go get a new light bulb, plug it into the lamp, flip the switch, nothing happens. Okay, so that was not a supported hypothesis. So I go back and I say, okay, need a new educated guess. How about the lamp isn't plugged in? Crawl on the floor, look, nope, lamp is plugged in. Hmm, okay, well maybe there's no power in this room. So I glance over at my... Um, my cable box and notice that the lights are out. New hypothesis. The power is off in this room. Maybe the power is off in the whole house. Look across the hall. Notice the lights are on in the other room. Hmm, maybe something tripped off the circuit breaker. So I run down to the basement, find my circuit breaker box, flip the switch, go back upstairs, turn on the lights. Ah! The uh, harps play and the light goes on and I have conclusion. My broad explanation will be that when you turn a light switch on, flip on a light switch, unless there is electricity running through the circuit, no power will get to your devices and the lights won't turn on. So that's an example of using the scientific method. Observation, hypothesis, experiments, conclusion. Often that conclusion leads to a model of some sort, which is an explanation of how phenomena occur or how data or events are related to one another. And that may be visual, it might be verbal, like I'm talking to you right now, or it may be a mathematical equation. So the theory is the broad generalization that explains a body of facts or phenomena. A scientific law is a concise statement that summarizes results. So a scientific law is different than a theory. With a theory, you might find some new piece of information and say, oh wait, that wasn't what I thought, we have to adjust our theory. A scientific law is just a concise statement that summarizes results, no matter what you do. This is how it turns out. And so we will learn quite a few scientific laws as we progress through this year. So then we have to talk about formulating and testing these hypotheses. So a hypothesis is a so-called testable statement. Testable meaning you can do experiments and confirm or shoot down a particular hypothesis. So they're based on observations that were made and then the testing hypothesis requires experimentation. So in order to test it you have to do a series of experiments. And then whenever you do an experiment you're always going to have a control um, so you're going to keep experimental conditions constant so that you have some sort of control over what you're understanding and what you're testing. And then there's always some variable that you will change. And as we go through doing experiments this year, you'll see that sometimes you have a control and you have a variable. So when we're observing and collecting data, we have to set up some definitions. So to learn more about matter, chemists study systems. So what the heck is a system? So a system is some specific portion of matter in a given region of space that has been selected to be studied 
during an experiment or an observation. So example, if we're doing a reaction in a test tube, our system is what's happening in the test tube, or our system is what's happening inside of a beaker, and we talk about the system and what surrounds it as the environment. So that leads us to measurement. If we're going to do experiments, we're going to be measuring something. So what do we mean when we say a measurement? A measurement is when we compare one object to some standard. So there are two types of measurements that we'll encounter, qualitative and quantitative. In science, all of our measurements are going to be uh, done using the SI units, which is the System International units. So in planet Earth, we all agree on a system of units, and that way, when we're talking about things, we all know what we're referring to and what we're measuring them against. So again, if I'm measuring length, and I decide to use my arm and say, this desk is one and a half Augustine arms long, somebody else in another part of the world might say, what? Whereas if I say, this desk is half a meter wide or half a meter long then everyone knows or in the um, American system if I say it is one yard long or one yard wide everyone knows what I'm talking to so I'm comparing it to some standard so first we'll talk about what I meant by a qualitative measurement and that's something that's descriptive and non-numerical in form. So I might look over and say Jane looks sick today. She looks sick to me. It's non-numerical. Whereas I might say quantitatively Jane looks sick today and when she went to the nurse the nurse measured her temperature as 101 degrees. So the quantitative measurement is a measurement that has a definite form. Her body temperature is 101. It has numbers, it has units, degrees in this case. So the difference is qualitative is non-numerical, quantitative numerical. So units of measurement. I said we'll be using the SI measurement system, also known as the metric system. So again, the difference is um, in the United States we use feet whereas in the metric system we use meters. So let's talk about these units a little bit. So metric versus American. Americans currently are using feet, inches, yards, miles, etc. and the system that we used was originally based on a king back in colonial times. So every time there was a new king, there were new units. And that's pretty much not just Americans. Everybody at one point had these weird systems where it had to be dependent on something like the king. So a yard was the length of the king's arm. A foot was the size of his foot. A pound was how many marbles he could pick up with one fist. And instead, we use the metric system now. So if you think about it, if you were living in one country and then you went to another country with a different king and you were trading, it made it a little bit difficult because everybody's units were slightly different. In one country, the length of the king's arm was bigger than it was in the other country, so the world decided pretty quickly that they needed some sort of system. The system we currently use is called the metric system, and it all is based on powers of 10, powers of 10 between the different units. So the international system of units, or le système international des units, huh? I didn't take French, uh, is a revised version of the metric system, which has seven base units. All of the rest are derived from those base units. So let's look at the base units. They are length, and the unit is the meter. Mass, it is the kilogram, although we'll be using the gram as our base for most things this year. Temperature is the Kelvin. Time is the second. The quantity is the mole. We'll get to that in chapter three. Luminosity is the candela, and current is the ampere. And there are a system of metric prefixes that we have to learn. And so if the unit 
uh, the base unit is the meter, for instance, here, then a decameter is 10 times a meter or 10 meters. A hectometer would be 100 kilo, a thousand mega, a million. And then on the smaller side of things, a tenth of a meter would be a decimeter, a hundredth would be a centi, a milli would be a thousandth, and a micro would be a millionth. So we're going to have to know these, and you're going to have to know these straight up. So I'm going to give you a saying that helps. So if you remember that the base is uh, the base unit for whatever type of measurement you're doing, we can use the saying, most kittens hate dogs because dogs can't meow much, where M most is mega, K kilo, hecto, dec, a uh, base, deci, centi, milli, and micro. So I'm going to introduce a couple more prefixes that we'll encounter this year. Tera, like terabytes of uh, storage space on your computer. Giga, again, storage space on your computer, gigabyte, so 10 to the 12th, 10 to the 9th. Hecto, micro, and nano. Oh, sorry, one more, pico. One more, femto, I lied. So 10 to the 12th is tera, 10 to, nine, 10 to the 9th or a billion is giga, hecto, 100, micro, millionth, nano, billionth, pico, 10 to the minus 12, femto, 10 to the minus 15. So um, I'm going to, I think, leave it here for now. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.